Welcome to the unboxing of the Next. This is our dual chip, dual frequency implantable transponder. And let's just take a look inside the box here. Uh, of course, we have our Danger Thing sticker that comes with every order. Uh, but the first thing you'll notice is the, uh, let's just do the diagnostic card here. So this is a very important tool that we include with all our implants. And essentially what it is, it's a credit card sized device. It fits in your wallet and it has two LEDs on it. It has a high frequency 13.56 megahertz indicator LED and a low frequency 125 kilohertz green LED indicator. And what this does is essentially in your wallet, you can put it up to any kind of reader you encounter in the wild and figure out what frequency it operates at and what duty cycle. So this is our KBR1. It's a, just a USB reader. And you can see that when we present the card, the high frequency red LED lights up and kind of blinks. That blinking gives you an indication of the duty cycle, how many times a second it's checking for a tag. You'll notice that battery powered readers and uh, smartphones, that kind of stuff, they usually have a, a slower uh, duty cycle because it's a battery powered application. It, do, it doesn't want to waste a bunch of power looking for tags too, too often. So um, you'll also notice that here on our low frequency, this is more of a typical access control system, uh, type of reader, you'll see the green LED light up, and that's low frequency, of course, and you can see uh, that it has a slower duty cycle. It checks only a few times a second for any kind of tag or transponder. The typical uh, reader will be either high frequency or low frequency, but there are dual frequency readers that do exist, even though they are rare. The next thing I want to talk about are these. These are our special keychains, our X-field detectors. They work similarly to the diagnostic card in that they show you or they light up when presented to a reader. So I'll show you, let's do the high frequency one first. This is the KBR1 and the antenna for this is in this area. But this, this tool is fundamentally different and it's important to talk about because you'll notice inside there's a cylindrical device. This matches the magnetic coupling performance of our implants, the X-series injectable implants in particular. So this is going to tell you where on the reader and in what orientation to present your implant to to get the best read. So I'll show you. Um, there's no chip or anything to scan. It just lights up when you put it in a, uh, an acceptable location at the acceptable or ideal orientation. So we'll put it here and you can see nothing's really happening. But as I move it toward the perimeter, you get this LED effect that lights up and you can see that in this location right there would be the ideal place to put your implant to get a good scan. So implant, scan, that kind of thing. And in fact, uh, I have an implant here and I'll show you, I can get that. Um, the important thing to note too is orientation does matter with implants or the cylindrical shaped implants because to get the best read, you need to be perpendicular to that antenna alignment. So if I rotate this, you'll see the LED doesn't do anything. But if I turn it even 45 degrees, you get a signal, but clearly the strongest signal is exactly perpendicular. And the same is true for an implant. If I presented my implant, which is parallel to my metacarpal bone in this direction, well, it's a bit powerful, so it does get a read. But um, if I turn, it gets that read much more readily. You can see that. So the same thing is true with the low frequency uh, XFD, the field detector. So you can see there's there's some action there. And as I go around, the perimeter, it's very, very faint, but you can see the performance. And this is indicative of some low powered readers. You wanna use this tool to be able to find the exact ideal location because otherwise you're gonna be hunting around or just kind of placing your implant there and it's not going to work. So this is what this tool is for, is to figure out the best spot to be placing your implant. So if I do that, you can see I get a read. And of course we move on to the the business at hand. So this is the actual injector kit and all of the materials. And you see this big sticker here. This is an important sticker. It says contents is sterile. Do not open until visiting this URL. And essentially that URL is just going to tell you, hey, this is a sterile pack and you should not open this pack, this, this uh, polymer bag, until you're actually getting it implanted by a professional. The reason for that is that all of the materials in here are in special sterilization pouches and those pouches are made of paper which is permeable so the sterilant can get inside and do its job but by handling it and touching it the oils on your skin the dirt the bacteria and contaminants will get worked into that pouch and so we'll go ahead and open this right now and we'll take a look so 
inside we have the injector kit itself. This is the next pouch. You see, you got your information here and the injector inside of it. And again, just by handling this pouch, touching it, um, we're introducing the idea of contamination. And over time, a very short amount of time, if I am rough with it, that contamination will make it through and into the pouch. So not, it really, really should not be handled until you're actually with a professional who's about to perform the implantation or installation of your device. Uh, let's take a look at what else is in here. We have, of course, we have the sterile drape to work on. We have antiseptic wipes, chlorhexidine, very important. We have sterile gauze and a Nexcare, you know, very high quality bandage. And we have gloves. Now, in this package, the gloves themselves, there's a warning on it, these gloves are not sterile. With a professional working carefully and following our guide, you don't actually need sterile gloves. Gloves are typically to protect the practitioner from you and not the other way around. There's no reason to touch the injection site. There's no reason to contaminate the materials as they're placed and dropped from their packaging onto the sterile drape. So non-sterile gloves are totally fine and with you know a professional that knows what they're doing. But let's take a look at this. So we're gonna go ahead and open and take a look at the injector itself. And it, there's a little notch and I tore it open there. And of course, they won't be handling it this way. They'll be dropping it onto the field, but this is the important bit. So once they're ready to perform the installation, safety should be removed. And here's the uh, injector end, the needle. Now this is a lure lock design. The, the needle body and the needle hub are connected through a lure lock system, which means if you turn this counterclockwise, the needle and hub will come away from the body. You don't want that. Turn it clockwise till it's firm, and that means that it's locked in place. If you confirm that it's firm, or the professional confirms that it's firm and firmly attached to the body, then remove the protective cap when ready, of course, to do the injection. And the needle itself will go under the skin. It'll go all the way, basically all the way to the hub, then will be removed some amount, about 12 millimeters, the length of the implant, and then the implant will be injected under the skin. And that is it. So this is the actual next. So one side is the low frequency T5577 chip. Very interesting and cool chip. There's more information about it in the, in the links uh, in the description below. And the NTAG216 chip, which is a really great high frequency ISO 1443A and NFC type two chip. You can program with some NFC applications. So this is the next unboxing. I hope you enjoyed it. The site might be called Dangerous Things, but remember, safety first.